Welcome everyone to Five Questions. My name is Todd Caps on behalf of the Common Table Foundation. And today I'm very pleased to be joined by our good friend, James Joyce III. Uh, I've had the pleasure of getting to know over the past couple of years uh, with his Coffee with a Black Guy series, uh, movement I should say. It's certainly becoming a movement. Uh, so welcome James, it's great to see you. Great to be here, Todd. I appreciate this and I like this platform. Let's go. Let's do it. All right. It. Question number one. What do you stand for? Well, when I hear that question at first, I think of, you know, you got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything, right? Sure. Um, and, um, you know, I definitely think that I stand for stories. Hmm. Right. Um, I, you know, in doing some self-discovery, I realized that, you know, came to the conclusion that I am my story. And that was pre coffee with the black guy. Right. And so, um, you know, my previous background was as a newspaper reporter and I took great pride. In, and what attracted me to that was the storytelling element, being able to tell people's story. Everybody's got a story. Um, and so, uh, you know, there there was that element of of like I stood for telling good stories. For example, I was hanging, I was an education reporter hanging out at schools and I saw all the kids getting excited for something called Cheese Zombie Day. <laughs> what the heck is that? And it was just in my curiosity of that, that energy and emotion that made me dig into that story and ended up you know, winning journalism prizes for that writing because of that inquisitiveness and in, in going to look for the story. And so I think I've always kind of uh, uh, stood for the story and, and um, you know, continue with Coffee with the Black Guy in, in a rather obvious way. Fantastic. Um, we're gonna move right along. Question number two. Uh, Tell us a brief story of a turning point in your life and why was it significant? Um, I think that would be in college. Uh, probably my junior year, I had ran, uh, went to Ohio University, uh, mm -hmm. ran track there, did hurdles, um, my, both my freshman and sophomore year. Um, my sophomore year, I, I uh, was uh, became a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. My chapter was a, an esteemed chapter on campus and ended up becoming president of that chapter. And so then I started, you know, still running track, but getting more involved on campus. Uh, I, I believe I missed maybe a track meet or some practice or something to go and attend a job fair. Mm -hmm. And uh, my coach at the time, not the head coach, but but my specialty coach, like it became an argument. Like, you mm -hmm. know, maybe, maybe you wouldn't be so injured if you would focus more on track and this, that, and the other. And I, I mean, that, for me, that was a turning point because it was like, you know, as a kid, I had visions of like, you know, being Olympian and, and, you know, being this, you know, gold, gold medal winning hurdler. Yeah. Um, but of course that doesn't happen when you realize that how much talent is actually out there. Um, and, and, and so, you know, I was running still in, in college at the division one level, but I wasn't the top person on the team. And so realistically, I know, okay, this is fun, but this is not my future. And so right then, you know, as I'm having that argument with the, with the coach, uh, you know, I, I didn't make a rash decision. I went home, I thought about it, and then I came back and, you know, the next day, maybe next couple of days, uh, uh, turned in my resignation and, and, and quit the team um, and, and made a full pivot to focus it on my professional future, which ended up working out pretty, pretty well for me. I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. Question number three, what problem must be solved. What problem must be solved? I think, um, you know, in particularly because of the times that we're in, as well as kind of what I do with Coffee with the Black Guy, the problem that must be solved is the race problem. Um, that is the biggest problem, I think, in our country and has been a pervasive issue in our country. I mean, racism in America is more American than the American flag. It's been around longer. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that is an issue that we would 
serve ourselves well to address. Uh, one, uh, and primarily, I believe, it's a homeland security issue, if nothing else, mm -hmm. right? You know, people know, uh, pe when I say people, exterior countries, interests, things like that, know that this is a problem in America and it has not been addressed and it is a source of divisiveness. And we saw the results of that uh, uh, propagated in the 2016 election uh, through the quote unquote Russian interference. Uh, and, and so, you know, I would wholeheartedly argue that, that, that addressing the race issue is, is a homeland security issue, but it's an economic issue, it's a moral issue, it's an ethical issue, it's all of the above. I think that's one of the, the pervasive issues that, that runs through and with that runs through, you know, classism and, and, and the sort. Um, but really addressing, you know, the race problem, uh, I, I think is, um, that's where we should be heading. Uh, and how would you describe how uh, Coffee with a Black Guy impacting is um what are the ways in which you see it's having an effect so i i think you know coffee the black guy I, I, over the four years that it's been been going thus far it's been um more or less non-black people's entry point in the conversations about race mm -hmm. right it, it it's um it, it's kind of like double dutch with race right you know i can tell you how to do it you can you know one one rope has to turn this way, the other one turn in this way, two people, one on each side. You gotta hop in and time it. But you're not gonna know how to do that until you actually try that and go through that exercise yourself. So, I mean, I think that it's very much like like that. That's what Coffee with a Black Guy is. It, it's that, look, we'll, we'll, you, you catch the rhythm wherever you're ready to, the conversation is continuing. It's the same conversation I've been having since I was in kindergarten, likely, just at a more academic level in a more expressive way. But um, you know, get into that continuum where you fit in. Um, and and I, I've seen that happening. I, I've seen folks come with good intentions and, and, and still learn uh, 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 through teachable moments. Um, and I've seen it build confidence within the Black community as well, because there's been a lot of feedback from folks saying that it's awesome to feel heard. It's great. It's cathartic to get our story out and to and to have people understand and be empathetic to that cause. And so, like, right back to the whole issue of, of compassion and empathy, um, you know, it, it's it's it, it, it's a starting point for that. Um, and, and it's just one point along the continuum. I mean, you know, hopefully before you decide to come to something like Coffee with a Black Guy, you've read a book or two uh, and have some basic knowledge and understanding or not, you know, not a prerequisite. Um, but just giving that, it's just like a snapshot of a slice of that continuum. Um, and there's plenty of other things that, that can go along with that racial understanding. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And question four, tell us about a key mentor in your life and how was this person important? So a key mentor in my life was a, a gentleman by the name of uh, James Young. Mm -hmm. And when I was in elementary school, I went to an elementary school called Robert Moton Elementary School, which was actually named after uh, an African-American man in uh, Carroll County. Um, mm -hmm. And um, but it was a predominantly white area. And so I'm, you know, one of a few black kids in my class and James Young and uh, I believe it was James Wilson, both mm -hmm. of their names were James. They went to, they were students at the local college in town, which, which at the time was uh, Western Maryland College. Mm -hmm. And they were volunteering as mentors at my elementary school. I must've been in third or fourth grade. They would come in maybe every two weeks or something like that. We would sit and talk, you know, just have some sort of a connection and bonding. And, um, you know, after I, they graduated from the, from the campus, they went on with their lives. Uh, um, I went on with, of course, getting through school. And then by the time I graduated high school, I uh, reconnected with, with James Young and, and reached out. And he was an attorney at that time. Um, and he, he's an attorney down in North Carolina. And I, I reached out to him and, you know, let him know how much he, of an impact he, he had on my life. Because largely, it's like there was no, ex you know, my mom raised me. So there, I have really had no, no intimate example of what black male success looked like. Mm. Um, and so being able to have that role modeling and make that connection at an early age and that I know was intentional. Um, and then when I, I'm, I'm graduating college and telling him this, he uh, volunteers to pay for my books for wow. my, for my, you know, wow. while I'm trying to, to go to college um, wow. and only under with no no stipulation other than when I'm able that I do the same for somebody else. And so like 
that's the kind of like goodwill that I've always been um, around, uh, been been a product of, um, mm-hmm. and and um, you know try to give back in 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 my you know whatever way that that I can. So yeah, I mean James was always um, you know kind of not a constant figure in my life, right? But um, because of the time when he was a constant figure of my life, that set the foundation, and then we stayed, stayed, and in, 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 in have stayed in relative contact uh, uh, since then. That's a fantastic story. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, we're up to the fifth question. Last already, five out of five. What gives you hope? Gives me hope. Hmm. I've been holding um, this up, by the way, James, I've been holding this up while you're talking. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, what gives me hope? Um, I, you know, I, 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 I guess people and, and kind of circling back to the first question about, you know, the story and, and understanding people's stories. I, that, I mean, people give me hope because at the end of the day, no matter how much ugliness there is, how much, you know, corruption and, 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 and nastiness there is in our world, at the root of things, I, I genuinely believe that people are good, right? right? And people want to do good. And, and you know, I, I've been, I guess I can say I've been a product of that again, goodwill and been a part of that goodwill throughout, you know, throughout my, my time on this planet. And, um, and I've observed quite a bit of goodwill, right? And, 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 you know, goodwill isn't always, you know, they say the, 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 uh, uh, pathway to, to, to hell is paved with good intentions. You know, goodwill isn't always, uh, uh, doesn't always turn out rosy and things, but, you, you know, I think that if you're, if, and what I've seen is a, a lot of, what interaction happened between humans on in America is um, is honest and 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 um, authentic and brief, but not. Um, I don't think we, you know, I, I I think we take it for granted, right? And so I, I say that, and in, in, in an example of that may be just, you know, okay. Two people in a neighborhood waking up early in the morning, seeing each other at 730 as they're going to their respective jobs. Do you say good morning or do you just be a mean grouch, right? Mm -hmm. People are good. You're going to say good morning, most likely, right? And so there's something about that, however superficial, there's something about that that gives me hope uh, uh, because we, you know, like that's just the seed that can go into other things. I agree with you completely. And I actually want to thank you for all that you do to promote goodwill. I think um, what you're doing is affecting a lot of people. It certainly has affected me. I'm a better person for it. Uh, and I also want to thank you for joining us today on five questions. So just five. <laughs> that was it. This is my friend James Joyce the third. Thank you all for joining us on behalf of the Common Table Foundation. We'll see you at the next one.